Hi, I'm Mayor Al Scrafty coming from St. Mary's, Ontario, and I'm here to introduce the Front Porch Soap, Home St. Mary's, St. Mary's Home to Me. Hello, hello, the Front Porch Show, we're set to go, the Front Porch Show. Hello, hello, we're set to go, on with the Front Porch Show. It's Dynamo, the Front Porch Show, Magnifico, the Front Porch Show. It's Dynamo, Magnifico, on with the Front Porch Show. We'll share a laugh or two. Big smiles for me and you. Hello, hello, the Front Porch Show. We're set to go, the Front Porch Show. Hello, hello, we're set to go on with the Front Porch Show. Welcome to the second show of season five of the Front Porch Show. And uh, we've got to say something at the beginning of the show. Last show we had a bit of nudity and we didn't warn anybody. So in this show, this show we're going to warn you that just like last show, there may be, uh, well, let's say it this way. Nudity. On the Front Porch Show, we really don't know what's going to happen. So there may be things that may offend you. Uh, the other thing is, this is the very first show that Don Van Galen has not been at the Front Porch Show. He's off visiting grandchildren right now, and uh, so we got the wonderful Peter Rice. You have big shoes to fill, Peter, uh, but Peter has helped us out with the Santa Claus parade for the Front Porch Show. So, Peter, uh, how things going for you? I'm just doing fine, John. Uh, let's hope that that Santa Claus parade is going to run this year. Can't wait for that. Hey! Well, thank you very much. Okay, well, Frank, what's up with you now? Well, nothing's not up with me too much, but uh, what's the uh, our, our dog's name uh, this Our dog's time? name is Ruby Tuesday. Ruby Tuesday? Ruby Tuesday. And she belongs to Gord and Kate Moylan, just up the street from here, and she's a sweetheart. Come here, Ruby. Hey, I got a song from uh, Dion. I got a dog and a Ruby is a name. Ruby, 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 baby. She's the kind of dog that'll drive me quite insane. Ruby, 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 baby. We love you. From the front porch show tonight. Ruby. Oh, you're so sweetheart, Ruby. So thank you, Frank. Isn't that Robin Ward walking down the street? Who's Robin Ward? Dr. Frankenstein on campus. I don't look like much of a monster, do I? Hardly. I don't understand. Is something wrong? Something the matter? Well, probably not. But I was out just now, and I thought I caught sight of someone. I need some sugar to make my coffee sweet, some shoes, put on my aching feet, now I say I need them. Well, this, is, uh, this has been enchanting. Uh, you've been a great help. Thank you so very much. The pleasure was all yours. Well, a friend, Lord, someone to Karen, did you have a nice weekend? I did. It was yeah. nice. It was quiet. I, I, as I was telling the audience, I did absolutely nothing towards my Christmas shopping. Well, I know that's rare for you and Bernie to do very good on the weekend. Oh, that Robin Ward. Yes, it is. Robin! Robin, thanks for coming to the front porch. I really appreciate it. Uh, first uh, off, where does your journey start in life? 
Well, it all began with a snotty-nosed little English kid that was living in Bristol, and he had a dream. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, I was a snotty-nosed little English kid living in Bristol. Uh, we emigrated to Canada. No, I don't know where it all began, actually. I don't think I was one of those people that ever uh, wanted to be an actor from my first uh, emerging consciousness. Uh, it sort of evolved over time. My parents were interested in theater, and uh, gradually, when I became old enough to drop out of university, which I did, I became a folk singer and uh, I fell into that. I seem to have always fallen into things. I became a folk singer with my sister and another man and we became quite successful. We, we had an album, we toured with Lightfoot and we worked with Joni Mitchell and we worked briefly with uh, you know Neil Young and people like that. So we actually were in that group. It's funny, the trajectory of my career uh, to, 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 to actually jump to the future, I didn't really become a, a good performer until I started to take it more seriously. And I, I didn't take it all that seriously when I was very young. It wasn't until later that I realized my deficiencies. <laughs> I, had to, I had to start to become much better. And I think to an extent I, I did, I succeeded. But in the beginning, I just fell into everything. And uh, one day I was doing a, a musical. I did a lot of musicals in the beginning, even though I wasn't a great singer. But I still did the musicals and uh, started to do some dramas and then some television and then um, I did a, a few series. I did Star Lost, which was uh, when I was quite young as well. That was a space series, which I did. See, it has a bit of a cult following, doesn't it? I'm astonished. I'm amazed. Uh, it was the, obviously the cult had never seen bad Canadian television because CBC was full of shows like that were that bad at the time, um, because it was done uh, with very limited special effects first of all and special effects fans like science fiction fans require their special effects to be quite good and don't forget that Star Lost was after 2001 the Space Odyssey Kubrick's film which had brilliant special effects we did this at, uh, at CFTO studios in, in agent court and they didn't spend the money on the special effects so it was a little bit schlocky a little bit tacky but you know, um, later people thought it had a kind of odd charm, I guess, because it does have a following. I went to a convention a few years ago where, and I thought, oh, this is going to be so embarrassing. Oh, they'll all be yelling, yelling, calling names, calling me names for the show. But everybody loved it. And I was, we had a, a, a news conference and I said, nobody will come. Packed, couldn't get a seat. And they were all huge fans of the show. Nobody was more surprised than I. So you started in Toronto. How did you get to New York? Well, I've always fallen into things. I, I, I maintain this this premise because it was true. I, I auditioned for um, a panelist on a show called What's My Line. I'd never done a panel show in my life. And I got the job. And it turned out that I was a really good panelist. I could guess what people did from the way they looked, practically. And so I was a panelist on What's My Line produced by Goodson Todman, big game show producers in New York. And they came to Canada to look for fresh talent. And I was, uh, so I had a lovely time being a panelist. And they said to me, how would you like to test? We're doing a new version of To Tell the Truth. How would you like to test for that? We'll fly you to New York and there'll be only two of you testing and it'll be between you two. And I said, well, it's a trip to New York, I'd love to. Didn't really see myself as a game show host or a panel show host, but I went, got the job. So next thing I know, I'm doing to tell the truth in New York for a year. Now, this was the eighth version of this show. They'd been, so it was on its last legs. It was definitely tottering near death when I took over. <laughs> and I put it firmly into the ground and uh, came back to Canada and uh, immediately was offered a game show in Canada, which was called Guess What? and ran for eight years, seven or eight years. So I did that. Again, I had no intention of being a game show host, but fell into it once again. And then, I forget what happened after that, I think I began to work in the theater more. I began to get plays, even when I was doing uh, t t t uh, Guess What in Canada, I had enough free time because we tape a whole block of shows in one weekend, I could work in the theater. I began to work a lot more in the theater. And I worked at uh, all kinds of places, St. Lawrence Center, many, many uh, venues, and I started to do more television films and feature films and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I did Guiding Light for uh, a year and a half, I did um, All My Children for about three months uh, until my permit ran out. Um, yeah, I've done weather, I've done news, I've done entertainment news, I've done movie reviews. I hosted a, a morning show called uh, Eye on Toronto, 
with Carla Collins, and, uh, and uh, you know, I, yes, it's, I've spread myself very thin. <laughs> but most of the work that I've done over my life that I've really um, enjoyed tremendously and look back on fondly was always involved in the theater. But, you know, not long ago, I was already old. I was starring in a, or, or the lead, one of the lead people in a show called um, Twist and Shout, the British Invasion at the Grand Theatre in London, right here. So I, here I am, well into my 60s, kind of starring in a rock and roll musical. And I thought, I stood in rehearsal with all these young kids who were brilliant and thought, what the hell are you doing here? This is marvelous. This is wonderful. I was so excited to do that show and thoroughly enjoyed it. And it was a success. It was held over for a week, sold out. So that was part of the one of the many shows I did for Drayton Entertainment. I did, uh, I think, a 10 or 12 shows for them over the years. But uh, Alex Moustakis, the artistic director of, uh, of Drayton, cast me in this rock and roll musical. And I was just just thrilled. And then not too long ago, I did uh, play Clar another musical, Clarence the Angel, in It's a Wonderful Life at uh, Aquarius Theatre in Hamilton. And that was a lot of fun. And I did a play called... Um, uh, other desert cities. I did that play twice, once at the Grand and once at the Citadel Theatre. It was a huge role, not a musical, a drama. Enjoyed that. So I've had many great experiences in the theatre. So yeah, and uh, it's been it's been quite a ride so far, and uh, I, I'm still anxious for the next chapter. I've been writing and painting lately, and uh, and I've come to really like living in St. Mary's. It's a very peaceful, interesting place, and uh, I love the the wildwood and hikes in the forest, and um, some and the wildlife here, and the people are lovely, and the eccentrics here are wonderful. How did you get here? Well, my wife, uh, Brenda, dragged me, kicking and screaming. We, we had a lovely house in the city of Toronto, and I said, and she said, let's take a drive to St. Mary's one day, one, one fateful day. And then we drove up Wellington, the street where we eventually lived, and we saw this old stone house. And I have to say that it hit both of us, that this is really a beautiful old house. It was stone, it was kind of Georgian in a rough-hewn kind of way, it had huge 200-year-old trees all over. It was just beautiful, much like your place here on the front porch, gorgeous. So I said, no, I'm not moving to St. Mary's. I'm not moving, I, you know, it's a lovely house, but it's, it's for somebody else. But anyway, long story short, I was persuaded. We sold our house in Toronto, we moved everything out here and ended up in this uh, house that was built in 1867 and which uh, we still love to this day. And, and I love Stratford too. We're living beside one of the cultural hubs of this country. You know, there's so much going on in Stratford and, and there's much more and more going on in St. Mary's, you know. Well, Robin, all the best and thank you for coming on to the front porch. Hi, I'm Erica. And I'm Kate. And you're watching the Front Porch Show. Yes. Oh, hello! How are you? My name is Chris from Ambrosia Green Bay Cafe. Come in, let's see what we got. Since I was 11 years old, I was cooking traditional Greek food like my mama and my grandma, like spanakopita spinach pie, manitaropita mushroom pies, and tiropita cheese pies. We also make Galactoburico, Greek custard field rolls, portocalopita, orange pie, our delicious moussaka, and our famous baklava. We are located at 83 Queen Street East at St. Mary's, Ontario. You can call us at 519-274-5750. Thank you. Hi, I'm Barry Cookson from St. Mary's, and you're watching the Front Porch Show. Welcome back. Uh, this week, we are going to the St. Mary's Farmer, Farmer's Market. Uh, Don Van Galen's out there to ask the question of the week. And this week, the question is, what would you like to see in St. Mary's that would make it even better than it is now? Don. Well, John, we're here with another John, Jonathan, and... We're asking him what new business he would like to see in St. Mary's. Well, I'm not from around here, so I don't know things too much, but uh, every time I come here, I'd like to do something kind of recreational. 
Uh, there's quite a lot of that around here. I remember a while ago there was a um, an escape room place that I heard was going to open up, but uh, it turns out it didn't, or either that or it opened for a very short amount of time. So anything sort of fun, recreational, something like that would be nice. And we're here with Andrew Middleton. Andrew, what kind of new business would you like to see in St. Mary's? The thing that I really like is getting up early in the morning and going to a bakery and having a fresh croissant or a crusty loaf of bread. That would be really great in St. Mary's. We have so many new businesses, which is fantastic, coffee shops, but wouldn't it be great to have a croissant freshly baked? Oh, my mouth is already mouth watering it. Perhaps somebody will do it. I think I might join you. My name's Louise D'Angelo from St. Mary's, and I'd like to see a soup and sandwich place open up here. And we're here with Anne, who wants to tell us about a new business she would like to see in St. Mary's. Hi there. I would love to see a greater variety of food options in St. Mary's, particularly ethnic food like Indian food or Thai food. Well, I'm getting hungry, John. I don't know about you. Hello, my name is Ken Irwin. Uh, I would like to see a year-round farmer's market in St. Mary's. John, we're here with Ahmed and Limar, and they have a business idea for the town. I think we should make a trampoline park. You ask why? Because a trampoline park would be great for kids to have fun. And you know here in St. Mary's, there's not a lot of stuff to do. That's a good question, John. Uh, I know what I'd like uh, to see in St. Mary's. What would you like to see, Peter? I would like a brand new theater. It doesn't have to be huge, something like uh, Port Stanley, uh, Blythe Theater. Something where the community players could just really stretch their legs and, and uh, it would really draw a lot of tourists into St. Mary's as well, don't you think? Now, when you say real theater, what do you mean? Because they uh, have a theater now. A theater building. Get them out of the town hall. Something, uh, you know, not huge. We're not going to uh, rival the Stratford Festival or anything like that. But a little smaller, smaller than even Port Stanley, but just something of our own. And uh, I think it would really be a tourist attraction. Thank you, Peter. Well, as with every episode, we showcase the remarkable musical talent we have here in St. Mary's. And trust me, there's lots of it. So this week, it is Kim Blanchard Such and Steve Strom. So hello, Kim and Steve. Hello, Frank. Hello, Frank. Are you still banana nuts? Yeah, thanks for asking about banana nuts. I, I'm still going banana nuts. I think the whole world is going banana nuts, but eventually we'll find our banana nuts and perhaps not go as banana nuts as we have been. Uh, anyway, let's talk about you. You do something called heartfelt music. Tell us about it. Uh, it's uh, basically our company that we run, all music-based activities. Uh, some performing, some teaching, some educational programs and community programs. And, uh, yeah. How did it start? It started back in 1994, actually. Uh, I started it off uh, as kind of a side hustle. I'd always loved music and kind of came back to it, started teaching. And I uh, was working in community relations at the time. Uh, and then eventually it... it uh, in. 2007 went back to full-time music with it. Steve, how did you get involved? Well, I've been in the music business uh, ever since high school, really, working in music stores, retail, fixing instruments, playing in bands, and then uh, I met Kim here over the years on and off. I've seen her playing in different bands, and then the timing was right. We started a duo together, and what was that about? 12 years ago Almost or so. 12 years. And just carried on from there. Kim, another thing you do is band jam. Like, I, I, I think I know what band jam is, but what is it? It's a, an engagement community music program where I go into a mixed group. It's an inclusive program, so a lot of community livings. And we just get up, people up and uh, celebrating music uh, before COVID, singing and using instruments and things, which I hope to get back to in the near future. And it's just uh, a lot of fun, um, a big lift, like a musical lift for people in their day. During COVID, you did a lot of live performances on the Internet. Uh, what is this all about? 
Well, some of our community programming, all of our community programming, of course, had to shut down when COVID began. Uh, there's a lot of singing, a lot of shared instruments, you know, and uh, so we wanted a way to stay connected to the groups uh, and keep everyone's spirits up as well, um, because uh, many of them look forward to it. Uh, myself, uh, we really look forward to it too. So it, it was a way to kind of keep that kind of connection going while we were kind of housebound with COVID and it just kind of kept evolving. So we've kept it going even as things open back up and it's been uh, so much fun. Our neighbor Brent joins us off in Brent O'Keefe and plays with us and our other neighbor Dan has joined us on occasion. Yeah. And where does heartfelt music go from here? Well, the hashtag I use is called making a joyful sound. And uh, as it's evolved, it's been just about uh, that connection, that celebration that music brings. So whether it's a program, whether it's education, whether it's a performance, that's always at the heart where heartfelt music came from, at the heart of uh, our goals. The original song you're going to play for us is called Rainbows. Tell us about it. I began writing this song shortly after my dad died. and. It was actually something that was happening, you know, you feel really uh, disheartened and sad and suddenly I just started seeing different types of rainbows in different places and it was just at, seemed like at the perfect moments to kind of keep reminding me that that was at the end of the journey and that uh, to keep me focused on positive things and it just kind of evolved out of that experience. Now here's Kim Blanchard Such and Steve Strom performing Rainbows. Colored prisms of light Showering me When I try to hide They're following Bouncing down the hallway When darkness falls And tries to block my view They shine, they shine through and I'm walking in rainbows, ribbons so bright, changing, shaping, rearranging, never far out of sight when I stumble and try to raise a wall. I hear them call the music that colors my life. Rainbow. So you say that I can't, don't try to change things, that I should dim the light and just accept things. But who I am doesn't need to fit in your life. These colors. No, these colors can't be defined And I'm walking in rainbows Ribbons so bright Changing, shaping, rearranging Never far out of sight If I stumble And try to raise a wall I hear them call the music that colors my life Rainbow My story, my vision, my life What I want, I desire My gift, your gift, shine a light Rainbow shining in you
I'm Angela from Zenfire Pottery, and you're watching the Front Porch Show. Welcome to Canadian Tire. I'm Daniel Lubinsa. And I'm Elena Lubinsa. And we're the proud owners of Canadian Tire St. Mary's. We may not be the biggest Canadian Tire in the world, but we're packed full of deals. From the floor to the roof, and from the garage to the backyard, we have everything you need for your home. Whether you're fixing something, or renovating your house, Buying some seasonal needs. Or having some fun. Or getting the gizmo to make your life easier, we have it all in one place. Oh, and did we mention that Canadian Tire also sells tires and looks after your car with licensed mechanics on duty. And that's our store. We're here at 84 Wellington Street South. And we can't wait to see you. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm Iris, and this is Artie. And you're watching the Front Port Show. Yay! One of the defining things in the downtown core has been the Weir Fountain. And it's been around for years. And there's been an individual called Matt Brenner who has taken it upon himself to update and to make, to kick care of the Weir Fountain. So we're now going to go to Matt Brenner. Hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, John. Good. How are you? Matt, wh what are you doing? I'm just uh, updating the fountain, getting a new fresh paint job on it. Needed uh, a touch-up. Tell us about the Weir Fountain. Uh, the fountain was um, donated to St. Mary's in 1903 by William Weir. Uh, he was the mayor for one year. Uh, he was the last person that lived on uh, Tracy House, which is now the museum. Uh, he named Cadzel Park. Um, yeah, and he donated it for all of us to have some nice water to drink for years to come. To many in the town, it's, it, this is really important. Why? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just an icon of St. Mary's. It's just uh, that one thing on the corner that everybody sees when they come through town. and It's just such a beautiful piece. You know, and uh, it just brings a lot of happiness to everybody. Because uh, everybody I've talked to remembers it from their childhood. Like, I remember coming down here as a child and having water. And Why are you touching it up? Um, well, I saw a couple years ago that it w needed a little paint job, and I thought uh, I could, uh, you know, offer my skills to the fountain because it's been such a good memory for me. Uh, so I thought I would donate my time to give it a, a little paint job and offer my skills. How have people responded to your efforts? Oh, it's been amazing. The town has been great. Uh, I get people come up and tell me stories about, you know, their childhood and, and uh, what they remember about the fountain and coming to town from out of town just for a, a drink of water here. Well, Matt, we'd like to thank you from the Front Porch Show and everybody in town for what you've done to the Weir Fountain. Oh, well, you can thank McConnell Club because they're really the ones that have taken care of it for, you know, over a hundred years. Uh, you know, I'm just a little part of it. Thank you. <laughs> we interrupt this show for a special report. Well, John, I'm in Kingston investigating the phenomenon known as the COVID baby boom. Twin boys, born July 6th. I'm here with Sawyer. And my name is Chris. I'm at an undisclosed location here with my son, Joseph. Uh, Don, uh, I wouldn't want to accuse you of nepotism. Peter, do you know what nepotism means? Oh, definitely, John. Okay, good. Uh, anyways, uh, I don't. You don't, Frank? <laughs> well, uh, you, it's spelled D I C T D I O N A R Y. Dictionary, okay, and you'll find the meaning of this the of nip, nip, nepotism. Anyways, uh, I wouldn't want to you using your exalted position on the front porch show to help promote your grandchildren's internet career and social media. John, look at these innocent faces. You don't think they would conspire with their grandfather, do you? 
Why, well, I doubt they could even pronounce the word nepotism. Besides, I could just as easily be investigating the COVID baby boom by visiting any one of the five great-grandchildren and one grandchild that my own mother is having in 2021. Uh, Don, it looks like the Van Galen family knows what to do during a lockdown, uh, so that's great. But I hear, Don, that you are a twin yourself, that they run in the family. Uh, isn't it a fact that maybe that when you're on the Front Porch show, it isn't actually you? I'm a fraternal twin. So what you see on the Front Porch show is 100% me. The secret to my success is staying healthy with hard work, good exercise like playing tennis, and not having accidents like falling off ladders. Uh, yeah, I've heard that that uh, could be bad for your health. Uh, look, tell me, uh, what is Sawyer and Joseph? Uh, what's it like for them having the world's greatest grandfather? Well, they know a good thing when they see it. They do have one request, though. It is nap time. Can Frank play a lullaby? Sure. Frank, would you like to end this special report with a bit of music for Sawyer and Joseph? Sawyer and Joseph, uh, John, uh, Don Van Galen's uh, grandkids. Yes, yes. He's I would love to. For the first time. So if they're out there right now, um, yes, I'll do a little thing that I wrote years ago in Sweden. I, and and uh, the reason why I wrote it is because I was doing nothing. And it was uh, the middle of the night, and the lights were off in this big hall, and it was a Sunday. And uh, when he asked me to do this, I thought I would. So here's a little lullaby. for Sawyer and Joseph. Congratulations, Don and Diane, on your new grandkids. <laughs> this has been a special report on the Front Porch Show. Now back to our regular program. What is becoming a summer tradition in St. Mary's, it started last year, is the Friday night races with Tallulah. Now, we'll get to Tallulah in a, in a little while, but Tallulah is, owner, is owned by Chet Grayson, also known as Captain N. Tennille, and by and Amy Gesso. And so they're out in the river right now. Let's go to them. Hey, Captain N. Tennille and Amy, how you doing? Hello. Hello. So... Uh, tell me the story. What's this thing about Tallulah? We had uh, we had a float to begin with that had a hole in the bottom of it, so your butt got wet. And uh, we used that the summer prior, and then Amy didn't like having her butt wet, 
So then we went shopping for a new floaty for the river and they only had the exact same one we had and this one. And the look on Amy's face when she saw this in the box was just so wistful and I we just we just had to get it. So we put it out on the river and then people started talking about it and taking photos. Taking photos and wanting to when is she going to be out next? Oh, we should we should get a flotilla going. We should have some races, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, started out, there were maybe three or four boats in the water, and by the end, geez, there was... At least 20. At least 20, yeah. And then on the sideline, it was over probably 100. Yeah, people were gathering on the shore, watching, cheering on. We had uh, John Nader come out. We had the mayor come out. We had... Um, yeah, and we do we do kids races. We had a lot of kids come out, so we'd have like a kids race, and then Terry we'd have Fox. we did the Terry Fox because um, uh, last year you could do Terry Fox any way you wanted. So uh, so we did on the river. Although she popped, this is technically Tulula, the second Tulula. Luckily, it was within the warranty, so we took it back and got a brand new one. So. But she popped on Terry Fox Day. We ended up having to haul her out of the river. So, so what are your plans for Tallulah this year? So I don't know. Uh, she's not built to last, unfortunately. It would be nice if she could last the summer. It would be very nice if she could last the summer. I think what we'll eventually do is just start swapping parts out, like RoboCop, and she'll end up this weird Frankenstein hybrid where probably a robo, but with a unicorn head. So we'll keep the spirit, but get rid of the made in China plastic. Do you know of any other place that does something like this? I think this is fairly rare. Yeah. How long will this go on for the summer? We'll probably end the summer. Uh, yeah. See how the if, weather if goes. We, if we can get some good uh, weather, you know, into the fall, we'd still do it. Yeah. yeah. September. As long as the weather's nice and the water's calm. Thank you for talking with us on the Front Porch Show. Well, folks, that's about winds up the show. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in to the episode two of season five hey, of John! the Front Porch Show. What's going on here? What's going on here? Hey, it's still Who's awesome. this guy? It's Peter Rice. I just He's got back from Kingston. Who's this imposter hey, sitting hey, in my hey, chair? Hey, hey, hey. Get out of here, man. Uh, as I've been working the show for five years. You I can't just walk you. in. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, welcome back, though. Yeah, well, thanks for keeping my chair warm. Well, it is. Well, yeah. what can I say? Anyway, see you in the ah. show. Ah. I was born in Ontario, a place to stand, a place to grow. From Pickle Lake to Point Pilate, there's no place I'd rather be than my hometown they call Stone Town. Prettiest town for miles around Where little falls laugh and people share smiles Treat you like family Home, St. Mary's, St. Mary's Home to me, home, St. Mary's St. Mary's home to me